We're in season three of Inside Athletics, brought to you by the IAAF. I'm your host, Atto Bolden. We are coming to you from the National Training Center in Claremont, Florida, and the place where my guest today trains. She was the bronze medalist back in 2007 at 400 meters at the World Championships. And in fact, she's been one of the most consistent 400 meter runners in the world. She has multiple relay medals, of course, with Jamaica. Welcome to the program, Novaline Williams-Mills. Thank you. You were dealing with something in 2012 which not a lot of people knew about and you revealed later. Tell me what that was. Um, 2012, um, about June or so, I found out that I had breast cancer. Yeah. I mean, devastated. Obviously. You know, at such a young age and, you know, when you're in the prime of, you know, getting ready for the Olympics, I think everything was going how I wanted to go. My season started out good and then, you know, you got a bomb. So, you know, as I said, you know, a lot of people didn't know about it. You know, it was something that for me, I think, it, you know, I had to keep it private because, you know, it's something that, you it's know. It's very personal. Yes. And for me, it was like, how can be the best way I can deal with this? You know, I was still training. You know, I didn't know where life would take me. I didn't know, you know, what would be the outcome. I didn't know nothing. I was unsure of everything because, you know, personally, I wouldn't expect to be dealing with that, you know, especially at, at that point in my life. So when you get a diagnosis of breast cancer, are you even allowed mm -hmm. to worry about the Olympic Games or were you only worried about your own health? I think at that point, you know, I forget about the Olympics. I mean, that was not important to me. You know, a lot of people would be like, you know, you're crazy, you know, that's important. But for me at that point, you know, it wasn't important to me. Yes, running was important at that time because it was a way of escaping from the reality right. of everything that was going on for me. So you make the decision, I'm not gonna release this publicly and I'm going to go to London and compete Tell me about whose advice you sought, uh, apart from your doctors, obviously, in terms of what your summer of 2012 would be like. I mean, you know, obviously, and I talked to my husband, yes. which is my big support system. Right. You know, but you know, when we look at everything, it was, you know, my doctor know, and I was like, man, I'm getting ready for the Olympics. You don't want to throw everybody at work because you've done all the work. Uh, yes. Yeah, so it was like, you know what? It was like. Um, your surgery is not until it was like when is the Olympics? I was like I run these days. It was like okay, you know your surgery is not until after. I mean there is no medical advice say you can't run. You know you can still do what you do, but you know since the surgery is after, just go and come back. So we just like okay, let's just go and just get away from it because my husband was like, you sit here watch the Olympics, exactly. being home, you know. It's going to drive you crazy because all you're going to think about every single day is, you know, what's going to happen, what's going to happen in surgery or, you know, what I have to do. So I think that was just getting away from everything and, I mean, pretend to be like everything was okay. But, and, and, and that's the thing, when you talk to Olympic athletes, they talk about you have to go to the Olympics and focus. How do you go to the Olympic Games and focus on your event, the relay, all the stuff that comes along with being an Olympian and Olympic competition, and still with, with this thing hanging over your head and, and in your mind every time you put your head on the pillow? You know, the funny thing about it was um, Kenya Sinclair was my roommate, yeah. you know, she's a very close friend of mine. So she knew what was going on. I think, you know, most of the time, I was even the team captain. <laughs> really? So, so one more thing to deal with. <laughs> yes, but you know, um, I think most of the time I would just go to practice, you know, just, you know, try to just be out there with them. But, you know, the reality of it was every time I go to the, um, the bathroom to take a shower, I would spend maybe more time than anybody because I was just in there just running that water and just crying because really? I was like, it was so hard. I was like, you know, you want to tell somebody, but I didn't want that pity party. I didn't want that. Right. So, you know, for me, it was like, okay, maybe if I just stay in here, cry a little bit, and then come out, then nobody would know what's going on. Or nobody have to ask me any question, like, are you okay? But the story has a happy ending. You make the Olympic final. You have a successful Olympic Games. And then what happens after the Olympics? After, after we run that finals, I was on the next plane the next day. So you I didn't run the relay? I run the relay. Right. After the relay, 
I didn't stay for the closing ceremony. Okay. I was on the plane. I think I cried all the way back to Orlando. Was it the relief from the Olympics or the fact that the tears came because now I have to go face this thing? The fact that I have to come back to reality. That, you know, I was like, okay, I have my days, I have everything, yeah. you know, but now it's reality. Now, three days, I'm going to be on a table. So it was getting off the plane. I think my first appointment was the next day because it was a three day process where, you know, I have to go in one day for, in, I think I have to do all my blood work. The next day, I, I have to go back in to get an injection where they put dye in so they could right. see everything that was going on. And then next day, I was in surgery. And of course, the story has a happy ending. You had the mastectomy, but you're cancer free now. Yes, I'm cancer free, thank God, <laughs> you know, but you know, every day it's still a worry, you know, because, you know, they always tell you, you know, the first couple of years are the critical years. So, you know, every day I'm like, you know, I still go for my checkup, but you know, you have that in the back of your mind, like, you know, will this thing ever come back? Well, let's switch gears for a little while now and talk about pure track and field. I mentioned at the top that you have been one of the most consistent quarter miles by far. Uh, over the last seven or eight years. Tell me what you attribute that uh, that consistency to because the 400 meters is not an easy <laughs> event and yet still every year you look at the world rankings you're right there. You know I mean I think my, for my first couple of years of my career I was with my college coach Tom Jones yes. that unfortunately passed away right. in 2007. He actually recruited me. I, I, I know Tom well. <laughs> yeah. Yes, very nice guy. So you know I think I have a coach that you know, coach me in college that really know my body. So for those years, you know, it was good. You know, I was, you know, he was able to, you know, put the workers together that would work for me. And I think one of the things, you know, he helped me believe in myself because I would be one of those athletes where I would be like, I can't. So and you have confidence problems? I have confidence problems, like for the first maybe year, and you'd be like, you can do this. You know, the first time it was like, you will you're gonna run 49 and that's time <laughs> i run 49 i was like okay <laughs> but you know i think you know it's all about trusting your coach trusting what you do and i think um from coach jones you know i'm now training with gary evans i think you know we have been working together for these past years and i think i've learned to trust them but like you know what especially with what i go through been through it was hard coming back but I was like you know we, we have to make some change and I have to trust what he do right. to get me back there and I think it's more like you know knowing your body trusting your worker trusting your coach that's a good that's a very very good formula um, one of the things that I always ask the Jamaican guests <laughs> on our show is what is it like to represent the country of Jamaica where you have an entire population that absolutely is in mad love with the sport of track and field. It has to be a very special feeling, first of all, but is there a lot, a lot of pressure on you? Because, you know, Jamaicans have very, very high expectations of their athletes. Sometimes it can be, you know, a lot of pressure because I remember 2013 when I started back my season right. and it wasn't going the way I wanted it to go. You would just beat cancer. But nobody know about that. So right. I was being criticized ah. for how I was doing. And, you know, for me, that was hard because, yes, you yes. know, I have my fans. I have people that look up to me and for them to be like, you know, start criticizing what I yeah. do and yeah. what's going on, you know. But, you know, I guess when, when you they have so much love for you, they always want you to do so good. So I couldn't be mad with them at some point, but I was mad. Right, right. But, you know, it's hard because, you know, you talking about an Olympic team, a world championship team, especially for an individual event, you can only have three people. Yes. So it's always a dog fight every time you go on that line to be in the top three. Yeah, and I know that you have not gotten an individual medal since 2007. So now that we're in a world championship year in 2015, you've been through Olympics, worlds, relays, beat cancer. What have you learned over the past six or seven seasons that you think can get you back on that podium this year? I think I have to learn still to believe in myself. But like, you know what? I've run with all these girls That's before. Right. You know, I and beat them all at I one beat point. Them the all. <laughs> yes. So, you know, it's more like, you know, going going back into that race in the finals and, you know, stop be like, okay, this one is in the final, that one in the final, but run my own race, concentrate on my own lane. And I think that's gonna be the big factor for me is black out everything else. 
everyone else and just concentrate on me. Well, we wish you all the best, all the Thank best you. in Beijing at the World Championships. Thank you so much.